speed down here. So we have 2017, 2018, and 2019. Uh, we have price and quantity. So quantity was 10, 12, 13. Price was 20,000, 24,000, and 26,000. We have this. And using this, what we had done was calculated the nominal GDP let's call it n and the real GDP and so if I remember those figures were 200,000 to 88,000 and 338,000 and this was 240,000 to 88,000 and 312,000 so let's start off with GDP deflator. Calculating GDP deflator is pretty straightforward. For any given year, so suppose for 2018, the GDP deflator will be given by the nominal GDP divided by the real GDP. So if we're doing this for 2017, what we get is 200 divided by 240, which gives us 0 0.87. If we do it for all three years, so this was for 2017 for 2018 the GDP deflator will be obviously 288,000 divided by 288,000 that gives us 1 and for 2019 we're going to get what do we get 338,000 divided by 312,000 that gives us 1.0833 so what does that mean it means that taking 2018 as our base year, which we had done previously as well, when price level is one, if we look back in the previous year, in 2017, what we see is that things were 13% cheaper. In 2018, something that cost $1 would have cost $0.87 or taka in 2017 and looking forward between 2018 and 2019 price have gone up what cost one in 2018 will cost 1.083 in 2019 so there has been a rise in price of eight percent that's the easiest way of calculating gdp deflator uh, you often see this formula GDP nominal equals to price level multiplied by GDP real where the price level is actually the GDP deflator now GDP deflator actually is not that popular we do not often use this because when we use GDP deflator I'm going to write this down what we are actually calculating is the change in price in goods produced And this is very important, goods produced. So for the economy as a whole, GDP deflator may be an important calculation and economists often use this, policymakers often use this, but for our day-to-day -day lives, we don't really care about goods that Bangladesh has produced. We only care about goods that we are consuming. So there are, some goods that are produced in the country, sure, but 
we don't really consume in this country. We export it to other foreign countries. We don't really care about the price of these goods and whether these are going up or going down. They do not have any effect on my day-to-day -day life. Similarly, there are a lot of goods that we import from other countries, goods that I consume and use in various ways in my day-to-day -day life, but they're not really produced in the country. But I really do care about the price level of these goods. Because of that, we often use another indicator that is the consumer price index, also known as the CPI. What the CPI calculate is the change in price in goods consumed. Now, this is much more relevant. I'm not really worried about whether the goods um, that I'm consuming are produced in Bangladesh or some other country. It has no bearing. I like them. I want to consume them. And so I'm invested in knowing whether their price levels are going up or down. So for average customers, for a day-to-day -day life, CPI is a more relevant indicator. But for certain analysis, more technical professional work, GDP deflator is used as well. So main difference between these two is that when we are calculating a CPI, we are subtracting our exports the, and we're adding imports, the price of goods that we export and import. That's the main difference between GDP deflator and CPI. Now, of course, calculating these are not very easy. There is a process that you have to follow and I'm not going to be spending any time going through that entire process. So once again, I'm going to request all of you to go back to your notes and from one or two and just jog your memories because you are actually going to need to know and remember everything you've learned in one or two to move forward in 207. So the next concept I'm going to talk about is a pure inflation. Now, I'm not sure if you have would have gone through this in one or two. So this may be the only new concept I talk about today. So let me write that down. Pure inflation. Now, before I talk about pure inflation, let's talk about inflation and why do we think inflation is a bad thing? Is it really a bad thing? Inflation would not be a bad thing thing if as the price of goods are going up wages went up as well inflation becomes a problem when goods are becoming more expensive while your income is 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 remaining the same which means with the same amount of money you can now buy fewer goods which means your standard of living is falling and that's a bad thing however as your inflation as as the inflation is going up if your wage rate was also going up you wouldn't really care even if inflation is a hundred percent if your wage went up by a hundred percent as well inflation wouldn't really be a big problem because you could still buy the same goods that you were buying previously with your income the problem arises when we bring wage into the equation and wage is sticky. This is a very important concept in macroeconomics. By stickiness, we mean that this, it, it, it cannot change immediately, it takes some time. A good that you buy can become more expensive or become cheaper immediately. 
you can go to a store today and see that price of everything has changed and it wouldn't really be a huge surprising but when it comes to wages there are usually contracts that are negotiated and enforceable for a year or a two-year period or a three-year period and during this period wage cannot really change so if your wage is fixed it's not changing it's sticky and inflation is changing your standard of living is falling that's when inflation becomes a problem pure inflation takes place when goods the price of goods and services is going up but the wage rate is also going up so there is inflation but it's not bad for everyone. 